it is inconceivable that finally my ass is back up in here doing a podcast. And inconceivable. I, yeah, I brought I brought VJ along. So I don't know if you guys have picked up on it yet, but VJ has become my buffer. It's like, you know, the old man sleeping on the bench and he comes up and shakes me trying to get me back awake. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, but that's what happens when you get old. You got to have the youngsters on board to, you know, keep you sharp and keep you on point. And We're he's keeping doing you in the times, man, keeping you updated. Right. Getting you involved. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, at you know this. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on up here, but you're, pro- you're probably too young to remember, um, um, what the hell was it called? Mr. Green Jeans and... Uh, you know, what was the kid program? I forgot the name of the pro. See, see what happens? But there, Mr. There, Green Jeans? Yeah. There was a um, Captain Kangaroo was the name of the program. Oh, yeah. Ca- you don't know that, right? You don't know no, that. I have no idea. So let me, let me school you, okay? Captain Kangaroo was this old dude. And, he, you know, you it's like Mr. Rogers. You come visit his little place, and it's kind of like a, a, a barnyard kind of a joint. You know, he's got one of those half doors, you know, like where the top opens up and you know, the dude sticks yeah, his head yeah. in and says hello and whatever. Well, Mr. Green Jeans is a neighbor, right? And Mr. Green Jeans would come over and then they'd start talking smack about this and that and the other thing. But, and then he had, he had, he had this little rabbit. It was a, you know, like a puppet, Bunny Rabbit. And Bunny Rabbit couldn't talk. So he would just slap his face on the, on the desk, you know, to try to, you know, make a point or whatever. But then he also had, this is going to go somewhere. You'll see. Then he had this this grandfather clock, okay? okay? And grandfather clock, you know, had eyes on it and a mouth and it could talk. But they have to wake him up, right? So his eyes would look, start blinking up and down like this. And, you know, grandfather clock would be up and, you know, and he'd have really smart stuff to say. And then he'd go back to sleep. I feel like I've seen clips of this somewhere. Well, it's happening right now. This is it. <laughs> I'm like Mr. Grandfather <laughs> Clock. <laughs> Coming over. And you're the bunny Knocking rabbit. on you, waking you up. <laughs> oh, God. So um, all that being said, check this out. Now, I know you saw it, but this is, you know, I'm going to try to make this happen visually for people that are audibly listening to my podcast. I will put a link on my podcast so you can, because we'll put this up on YouTube. And on YouTube, you'll see what we just all did. And I want you to do it for one good reason. is because this is happening. This right here is happening. I finally got my copy. And I know it's backwards for you folks. But I finally got my copy. And wow, 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 wow. So check this out. And he is talking about Training the Dark Side. The new book that he released. He has... A paperback in his hands that he can touch, feel, and see. Can I tell you something? Everybody stuff. that's a fan of this program has heard me rant about this book I'm writing for years. For literally years they've been listening to me rant about this. And they probably got to this place, well, you know, this guy's full of shit. He's not really going to write a book. And so this is evidence that there's physically a book in the work. It's done. It is complete. Finito. Available on Amazon, but I highly recommend you get the digital edition. I'm going to give you two. One PDF file for those that are not that sharp. And an EPUB for those that uh, are more technical savvy. So you get both. And so that it, it travels with your phone, travels with your iPad. you got a different place to go. That way you don't have to pack this along when you get on it. The plane, especially when you're trying to wear that mask and whatever. Right. So we could talk a little bit about the book um, because I think it's I think it's good stuff. Clearly, I wrote the book. I'm going to think it's good stuff. I hope so. But so here's what happens a lot with me on social media. You see these people bantering back and forth, especially the ones that are in these various groups that will re- re- remain nameless for the meantime. <laughs> where they start asking questions about heart rate, you know. Well, dude, when I'm like 130, that doesn't seem right to me. And when I'm at 150, that doesn't seem right to me. 
they're they're confusing their perception of effort with what is actually going on metabolically in their system. And this whole concept of trying to stay aerobic, uh, or you know, they do the track workout where it's completely off the hook anaerobic. There's they they look at it like this swinging door. It's like it's either over here or it's over there, and they 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 segregate their processes. And I think the most important gift that I I provide in the course of this book is to try to develop an understanding of the importance of integrating all of your work in your training. And meaning that you develop the energy system at large. There are not like these independent energy systems. There's not like your aerobic things over here and your anaerobic things over there. That's not the way it works. Your body systematically travels in and out of this energy system based on demand. When you get into higher intensity, it's going to produce lactate because you're using predominantly carbohydrate. The other way, you know, you're going to get into the fat stores. But anybody that believes that spending a, a ton, a shit ton of work, aerobic is going to make them faster, really confused. Completely, completely confused. So that was really the focus of the book of late. When I started to write this thing, my mind was completely other places. And it took me a little bit of time, and I, I, I just wasn't ready to learn it, and I did. Finally, I, I just got to this place where this massive epiphany, it was just like this cloud cleared up from underneath my, my head. You know, like Grandfather Clock woke up. And, uh, and I just, I really think it's, a, it's an important piece of work for most endurance athletes to read. Honest to God, I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to hang my hat on that concept. What do you think? I think uh, it's definitely a, a, a good approach, what you've kind of developed. It, I'm really amazed that it hasn't happened before, but I mean, somebody has to be the person to, you know, come up with the idea and, and break ground on it. So it totally makes sense um, having a little bit of intensity involved in a lot of your different work, but then people, um, they segregate their work all the time where you're just doing only aerobic. and. Or and, and then you switch over to only intensity on these days and only aerobic on these days. When I think people think that when you're focusing on your aerobic, you know, that's the only way that you're gonna develop that side of your fitness. But then when you're racing, you are have you are dipping into like that aerobic a little bit as well, but you're also working intensity. You have like this it's like a percentage. When people think you flip that switch and you're now you're anaerobic and that that that's it. It's, it's short-sighted, and I'm really disappointed in myself for not having identified the problem earlier. Seriously, I'm telling you that. I, I think that uh, it, it re just struck me. It just struck me like a rock, it, and, and, you know, I'm going to go into a bunch of stupid analogies. I know it. I can feel I'm just churning along in my head right now, but <laughs> I started thinking about like a boxer, you know, or... Um, any sport, they'll, they'll like, you have these commentators that'll start talking about a particular athlete. He's got great speed, but he doesn't have any stamina. You know, the guy can jump, but he can't do this or that. You know, he's got a great jab, but he doesn't have much of a punch. He's got a great punch, but he doesn't have a jab. And it's because the way they approach their training, they segregate their processes, they focus on what they might believe is their weakness, and they've never really integrated the entire process. So, and, and I made this comment many times, and I'm going to do it again, is that people do their training, and I, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm going to stand up and, and take my hit for being guilty, where I'm writing program for people where there's an aerobic day, you know, and my focus might be that at the end of the week, I want it dominantly aerobic. And so I'm okay with that. That's a good idea. It's an endurance sport. You need to have a lot of aerobic conditioning in, in your play. But when, when I write these segregated processes and then somebody shows up at a race and gun goes off, all that shit goes right out the window. It goes out the window. All they're doing now is trying to catch the guy ahead of them or, or you know, try to make it up the hill that they weren't prepared for or take the descent that they weren't prepared for. And they never really had an integrated approach to training. And, and I don't even think that you should step like, okay, I did this. Now I need to do this. Now I need to do that. Now I need to do this. You need to integrate, and the term that I use in here, which I'm not going to claim because 
better minds before me have used this term, but to flow, to flow in and out of these energy systems and the demands for strength, the demands for speed, the demands for whatever the, the processes are demanding of you, develop them synergistically, bring them together, bring, you know, and develop them systematically where you, you know, the focus might be early on if you're going to do a long event to spend more time being aerobic. But what about when you need that speed? What about when you need that power? Uh, if you segregate, you may not be able to deliver that power after you've been aerobic for a while, you know, or if you spend too much time aerobic, you never, you can't open your stride. You can't, you can't move. You're trapped. So what we did in this book, we, me and my, me and myself did in this book was develop a system or understanding of approaching this type of process. And I, I'm telling you, I've had a hard time trying to deliver my pitch, you know, my pitch to, to sell my book to people mm -hmm. because it's, it's complex. It really is complex, but then it becomes so freaking logical. So, um, that's my shameless plug for my book. Buy it from my I, website. Don't go to, I took, it, it took me, I don't know if you heard me complaining about this. It took me, I, I, I released the book and I ordered my copies. They call it the advanced author copies. On July 1st, I ordered it. I just got them today. And I call, and they emailed me yesterday, as a matter of fact, they emailed me yesterday and said, uh, We're sorry, but there's a delay. Your books won't arrive till August 8th. So essentially, over a month before I get my copy. And I got people in social media taking pictures of the book that they, Oh, look, I got my book. I got my book. What the hell? I haven't got my book yet. And I wrote it, right? So I called them. <laughs> I called them, and they couldn't give me a straight answer. I'm like, well, why Why do I have to wait a month to get my book when everybody else is getting their books ahead? I mean, I ordered mine first. They said, well, cancel. you want to cancel your order? I said, that's your answer? <laughs> You're telling me the author of the book, the guy that we're making money together on this book, to cancel my order? I said, then what happens if I cancel my order, if I reorder it, am I going to still have to wait a month, or am I at the back of the line? She couldn't give me an answer because I, well, we don't discuss business with shipping. We don't communicate with shipping. I said, well, who, communica who communicates with shipping? Can we get an answer? Couldn't give me an answer. And lo and behold, after all that bitch session I had, bam, the next day I got the book. <laughs> so there's something, something really screwy going on with that. So if you buy my digital book, guess what? You're going to get it the minute you, you drop dime. You're going to get it right away. And it's the same stuff, same stuff. Actually, it's probably a little cleaner because it, I found a typo in here I need to correct. So 